So far with kinematics, we've dealt with uh, single equations for kinematics, or maybe a couple equations that we have to solve, but we solve them one after another. We will have times, though, where we will actually need to solve two equations simultaneously. We call that solving a system of equation, and it's something that uh, I think you'd be familiar with from your math classes. Uh, maybe a little different context, though, so definitely worth practicing. You might encounter this in a couple of different ways, um, either for a single object where there are two pieces of information that are missing that can't be untangled from each other. Um, so one example would be maybe you know the angle that something is launched at, but not the speed at which it's launched. Um, you end up solving a system of equations to, to find the answer in that one. Um, another option might be if there are two objects and we're looking at uh, maybe some point where they intersect. And that's what we're going to be looking at for this problem. So our very first setup like this, we'll have two different balls. One's being dropped from the top of the building, one's thrown upward from the bottom of the building, and they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. And our job is to figure out where exactly that takes place. We'll start the same way we have been with other kinematics problems, by writing down our given information what will be different here, though, is that we'll have two different uh, objects to keep track of. So we want to make sure that our variables are um, uh, differentiated for those two different objects and that we're careful we don't mix and match values as we're doing this. I think it's often useful just to make a, a sketch of the situation. Helps you picture things and, and maybe pick out some information you otherwise would have missed here. Uh, I have ball A and ball B labeled, and I just picked names for these ones. So ball A is up at the top, um, and I'm going to keep my uh, given information separated that way as well. So for ball A, I can say that the initial velocity, and this is going to be up and down motion only, so I'll call this um, Y, V, Y naught for A. So we end up with a lot of subscripts on some of these is zero. Uh, I don't know the final velocity for that ball, but uh, I know it's going to be some downward velocity. Uh, let's see, the y initial for a is going to be up at a height of, well it's at the top of the building. I'm just going to use the ground as zero, so I'll say 45 meters. And I don't know where the final position is going to be. That's something I want to find here. Right, that's the only thing I want to find, really. And then, let's see, I know my acceleration in the y direction for a is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. I'm using the ground as zero, and up top of the building is 45, so up is positive, down is negative. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I know all those things for ball a. Now for ball B, I know the initial velocity in the y direction is 25 meters per second, and that's upwards, so make that a positive. I know the initial y position for B is 1.3 meters off the ground. I'm looking for the final y position. It'll be the same as it is for ball A. And I know the acceleration in the y for ball B is going to be the same, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, we also want to keep in mind here that uh, with, with these problems, oftentimes we'll be using the kinematics equations in conjunction with equations that we write for ourselves. Now here, when it says that the two balls are crossing paths, that happens when they're at the same position. So I can actually write an equation that expresses that, just that the final position for A equals the final position for B. And that'll be one of the, the equations that I use when I need to go and solve a system of equations. I use that relationship to do that. Now we'll take a look at the kinematics equations and see how we can progress from here. 
Now looking at the forms of the kinematics equations, the first one we see right away is not going to be especially useful for us. So this one has uh, the final velocity in the y direction as well as time in it. Now we don't know either of those variables and we're not asked for either of those variables either. So that one is not going to be a good one to go with. We are looking for the final position uh, and so that appears here in the second equation and here in the third equation. So either of these equations might be useful to us. Let's look at what else we uh, we have in these equations. Uh, for the second one we've got the y naught value, which we know for both ball A and ball B, the initial velocity, which we know for both ball A and ball B, and we've got the time, um, which we don't know for either one of those, and then the acceleration, which we know for both of them. So if we use the second equation, we'll have uh, both time and our final position as unknown values. In the third one, we'll have the final velocity, which is unknown for both balls. Initial velocity, which is known for both balls. Acceleration is known for both. Y is what we're trying to solve for, and Y not is uh, known for both balls. So in either one of these equations, when I set it up for ball A or ball B, we find that we'll have two unknowns in, that, in each equation, uh, which means that we can't solve with just a single equation. We have to solve them as a system of two equations. We'll have one equation that we write for ball A, one equation that we write for ball B. Now we want to try and plan this so that those two equations have the same two unknown variables in them. In the third equation, we have the y value, which is going to be the same for each, uh, the, the ending y value will be the same for each ball, but the ending velocity um, won't be. So those, those two values will be different. So I'll have a vya and a vyb, two separate values there. So I really end up with three separate variables, three separate unknowns um, between the two equations if I use the third one. With the second equation, um, we'll have y as an unknown, both ya and yb, but since we wrote this relationship that those two values are the same, then um, you know we can just write them both as just y. We can treat them as just a single variable. We also have time, which doesn't depend on, uh, on which ball we're looking at either. When they cross paths, they have to be at the same place at the same moment in time. So they both have the same value for y. The amount of time that passes for each ball would be equal as well. So our second equation looks like the best bet on this one. So let's write this out for each, each of the two balls and then we'll see about solving this. So I'll set this equation up once for ball A on the left and once for ball B on the right. We have basically the same information for each ball, so the forms of these equations are going to look very similar. So let's plug in our known values now. And now we have two expressions, one for yA, one for yB, both in terms of t. These are simplified as much as we can get them. I've taken out the variables just to, to make it easier to see what, you know, how the numbers are working out. Um, we still have, though, two variables in each one of these equations. But, since we know that yA equals yB, yA equals yB, I can also write that this expression must equal this expression. So essentially what I'm doing here is actually solving a system of three equations with three unknown variables. But when I make a substitution, I reduce it down to two equations with two unknown variables, and we'll very quickly get down to one equation with one unknown variable. So I'm going to set this equal to this now. And with that we can see now we have just a single equation where the only unknown value is t, the time. Uh, I'm going to group like terms together now. So I've got a t squared term on both sides and I've got a constant term on both sides. I'll uh, leave the constant alone for now. Make this 45, add the 4.9t squared to both sides. That's going to, uh, let's see, negative 4.9 plus positive 4.9t squared. It's 
going to be 0, and we get the same thing over there. So essentially that term will just drop out. Plus 25t. I'm going to subtract the 1.3 from both sides. That leaves me with 43.7 on the left side, and 25t on the right side. And then I'll divide both sides by 25 which is going to give me 1.75, oops, 1.75, the units are going to be seconds for time. Now, that tells us how much time passes before they cross paths, but not where they cross paths. So my last step, I need to go back to either this equation or this equation and plug in my time to figure out what the y position was. Since the y position is the same for the red and for the blue, it doesn't matter which one I use. So I'll use the one that has fewer terms in it, fewer calculations on this one. So now I can write that as ya or yb or just y is equal to 45 minus 4.9 times 1.75 and that gets squared. And so our final answer on is that these two balls are going to cross paths when they're at 30 meters off the ground. So, on these problems, again, there's a variety of different situations that might lead us to have to solve uh, multiple equations simultaneously, but uh, a good Good, a good strategy on these is to kind of write out some of these things that we know, like the two positions have to be the same if they're crossing paths. Write those out as equations. The equations are easier to link together than um, an equation with a more abstract idea. So write them out as equations. You know, if worse comes to worse, you can certainly start writing some equations that you're not sure if we can connect those together and you know, just kind of see how the, the pieces fall into place then. Um, be sure at the very end, too, that you answer the question they ask for. I think it would be pretty easy to stop at this point after you solve for the time and never actually find the position, which is what they were asking for. So watch out for that. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something from this video, please like. Like the video if you think you'll learn something from future videos. Um, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. And uh, if you know somebody else whom you think might learn something from this, then by all means, share it. Let somebody else uh, uh, get some use out of this, too. Thanks again.